Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to Deus Ex. GC, I'm depending on you. When you find Savage, get him to help you on the database. The Melnet computer should be near the control room on the second floor of the command building. Well, they promised us spider bots, and so they're spider bots. Hmm. That panel isn't very useful overall. Let's see here. Wait, well, it's not command, it's... yeah. Tunnel 01... Omega 2A. Yeah, only one camera, though. Still, something I don't have to worry about anymore. Hmm. Alright, well, looks like you can shut this off, but... Ah, uh, damn it. So, I know it is possible to jump over those. I just apparently had lead feet this time. And the door shut. Well, on the plus side, you got to see what happens when you trigger those lasers, so... That's actually what this panel here is for. It allows me to reset the door, which opens it again. It's like a portion of the wall exploded there. Of course, if I go through that door, then I'll be, uh, subjected to radiation. It's not actually that bad, and the radiation area isn't actually that long either. But I figure, you know what, there are ways to go around, so let's explore the ways to go around. Like jumping into this water here. Man, this whole area's been flooded. Looks like that guy dropped this key here. Ah, oh, the maintenance key. That opens the door on the other side of where I just was. Unfortunately, there isn't a direct way back. See the uh, drop-off I just went down? It's a little too high to climb back up from here. So I'm going to have to find another way out. Like through this door here, for instance. So, let's find out where we are. Aha! And now that I know where I am, I feel free to explore a little. That's the way I came in. But down here we've got another door. With a keypad that's going to take a lot of multi-tools. Unless... I take a moment to upgrade electronics. Now it should only be two tools. It's a good thing, too, because I am almost out of oxygen. Of course, on reflection, I probably could have put another point into swimming instead. That would have been cheaper. But, hey, improved electronics is going to be helpful overall, too. This guy's got an upgrade canister. That's why it is definitely worth it to try and figure out what's down here. I figure I'll give targeting a boost. You know, figure out what that's all about. And everything else we got is a pistol and some armor I don't need. Well, that was cutting it close. Still, the reason that we went down into that flooded area has now been vindicated. So the maintenance allows us to climb up here onto these pipes. Somehow these pipes are just far enough away from that glowing green stuff 
that I don't have to worry about, you know, getting harmed by this. And once I'm past that section, I can drop down over here. The pipes cross all the way across, but there's no space to fall down on the other side. Kind of look like a secret door, but... Oh well. So what else do we have around here? Guess that's it. So... Two tools at 80%. Might as well. Barely used any multi-tools for a very long time. Figure I might as well put some of them to use. So what do we have here? Looks like it's the elevator controls, but... I'll worry about that later. Tricky that, but it's not too much to worry about. But now that I've explored the base level here, if I can get through the damp door, it's time to use the elevator controls. Bring it up to level two. That should be good. Now, of course, I could retrace my steps, get it up to level three, but I've got super speed and super strength. So why the hell should I have to worry about little things like jump height? Looks like if I get over to this... What the? Oh, for crying out loud. Well, now I know where that guy was. But yeah. Level 4 super speed. I officially don't have to care about little details like juggling boxes or getting the elevator all the way up to the third level and retracing my steps. And then at the end, we got this guy with the key and a multi-tool. Man, it's almost a shame he got this far. Huh. And that's the end of the tunnels. Attack my systems and you will suffer considerable losses. And she still won't talk to me. Anyway, that door was infinite infinite, which is why you cannot come in from this side of the tunnels. Now it's time to enter the command center. Read that one already? see if this has any more email on it. Alright, leave a stand, that's old. Reactor modules, okay. And S. Weber's worried about a genetic profile which just so happens to be ourselves. Well, that looks dangerous. There's only one way to go from here. No. Oh, hey, it's Carter. Hi, Carter. Mr. Carter. Yep, they ran the old dog out. You were dismissed? All of us career types. They want cadets who've never been anywhere except UNATCO and the UNATCO Academy. Easier to manage, I suppose. Time to come out here and lend a hand. I knew what Savage was up against. I just didn't want to admit it. It's an honor to have you with us, sir. All right, enough bawling our eyes out. We've got work to do. I didn't want to admit that UNATCO could be corrupted, but finally, I had to leave. I guess it's not surprising to find a few crooks in a place protected by security procedures. The shadow of secrecy. 
It protects indiscriminately. Let's shoot the breeze later. Black programs are too far, if you want to know my opinion. The darkest shadows where guys like Page can operate invisibly, like parts of Area 51. Programs not even Congress can ask about. There is a time and a place for security, but the legislature has to stay vigilant, and there will be abuses. That's where we have the advantage against Bob Page. We've learned his secrets, his first line of defense. Time for you to move out, soldier. Enough chit-chat. I guess it's not surprising to find a few crooks in a place protected by security procedures. A shadow of secrecy. It protects the group. You saved our lives. Dr. Savage would like to thank you. We saw the battle through the cameras. I can't believe you pulled it off. You saved our lives. Gary wants to see you. You saved our lives. Dr. Savage. Gary wants to see you. All right, then. I'm Dr. Savage. Thank you. We were close to surrendering when you landed. J.C. Denton. I'm working with Morgan Everett of the Illuminati. He's developed a cure for the Great Death, and we were hoping to get time on your UC to manufacture it. Everett contacted me just before the attack. Naturally, we'll manufacture the cure once the computers back up and we get a containment unit for the UC. How close are you to being operational? My daughter's on an expedition to the Ocean Lab right now to find a schematic for the containment vessel. But Lord knows when the computer will be back up. It was damaged during the attack. I'll look at it. In addition to the UC, Everett and I need your connection to the Millnet. Yes, he said something about an artificial intelligence. The Echelon system. Something called Icarus and Daedalus. Another attack happening as we speak. I'll explain later. Well, the main terminal is in the room at the top of the stairs. Log in G Savage, password Tiffany. I'll open the doors. I would say it's too dangerous. A lot of damaged equipment and hot power lines up there. But until the computers are up, the UC's just a box of bolts. It won't be easy getting back there. We lost most of the machines, but the main server survived. I believe you know Mr. Carter from Yanatco? He just escaped the purge. We just need to bring the central computer online. A rocket exploded on the roof. Luckily, nobody was hurt. I should hear from Tiffany soon. Then we'll know if the UC will be ready for operation. Be careful in there. A rocket exploded on the roof. So you don't mind if I hack your computer, right? Right. Oh, there's Carter. Coming in. Tiffany Savage, wishing good luck. And somebody's warning about the attack again. I'm surprised anything up there survived the explosion. We lost nothing critical during the attack. The main terminal is in the back, on the second level. Majestic 12 will be back. We're close to having a UC and they know it. We left the lift on the upper level, I'm afraid. You'll have to use the switch in the middle of the computer room to bring it down. I would be careful about trusting the Illuminati. We really need that system up, but don't get yourself electrocuted. I would be careful about trusting... We left the lift on the upper level, I'm afraid. You'll have to use the Enough switch in the middle of the computer room. Just bring up the system for Savage. I'll route Daedalus through your info link. Don't worry, there's very little risk. So, that's the switch the guy was talking about to get the lift down. And to get over there safely, you need to turn off the electricity at that box. Which you can see is sort of a dodging game. But, you know what I say? I say nuts to all that dodging electricity bolts like that. I got a better idea. It involves coming up here. Anything else? Nope. Yep, it involves coming up here, taking a look at this. And then blowing that bad boy up. And hey, what do you know? I'm in the computer room. Can't use that to climb up, but... Well, it's a little troubling to figure out a way to jump down. Because, you know, there is electricity on the second level as well. But for the most part, the thing I'm standing on 
right now is above all of the area that you can stand on on the second level. So you gotta be careful about choosing where to fall. I'm kind of hoping that there's an easy way down. Though for the most part there isn't. So... Oh. Well, whatever. Here I am on the second level, having skipped all that nonsense on the first. Now I just need to dodge past this particular bolt. If I can figure out the timing. Or maybe the timing doesn't matter. Maybe I'm low enough when I'm crouching that it doesn't hit me anyway. But, once you access this computer, all the electricity will go away. Just have to, uh... Nah, that's the email on his other computer. Yep, there it goes. Now we got Milnet access and the electricity is gone. I am. I'm losing Daedalus. Yes. Hold on, some things. You forgot about the Aquinas protocol. I was listening to Daedalus all along, waiting. The AIs seem to be merging. And I have another surprise, Denton. Find Savage in the control room. I have an announcement. Something went wrong, JC. I'm looking into it. Oh, well, that's not good news. You know what else isn't a good sign? When the globe turns into Bob Page. Talk to Savage. We're expecting a communication from Bob Page. You don't say. Excellent. We're all here. You aren't in a position to make any demands, Paige. On the contrary, my mission might have failed, but so did yours. I captured your daughter an hour ago. Tiffany. She's been quite forthcoming. So you were hoping to find a containment unit in the Ocean Lab? I demand to see my daughter immediately. Well, like you, we lack certain components of a universal constructor. The reaction modules you stole when you left Area 51 to go into business for yourself. Don't negotiate. Oh yes, Mr. Denton. I wanted you here for a reason. Look at me. You interfere in any way, I will kill that young woman. I mean it. I want those components, Savage. You will bring them to the abandoned gas station west of Vandenberg in exactly one hour. You hurt my daughter, and I swear to God. Bring me the reaction modules! I don't think we have a choice. Oh, I should have never let her go. Paige will resume production of the plague if he gets the components to build a UC. I know, I know. But I can't let them kill Tiffany. Tell them you're sending someone with the components. I'll have my pilot drop me off where they're holding your daughter. Maybe I can rescue her. That's too risky. We don't have a choice. Trust me. She'll be fine. Yes. Yes, we've got to try it. Just don't let anything happen to her. Mr. Denton, thank you. Here's a photograph so that you can identify her. Oh, that's right. I didn't actually look at the uh, Vandenberg photo either. Kind of weird that they got the brackets in here on the image, though. Yeah, that actually says where you can find the uh, two things to turn on the security bay doors. Might have been a little useful. Something unexpected happened when I brought up the computer. Yes? The AIs joined together into an entity called Helios, a trap Page had laid. He's always controlled communications. We can't challenge him there. I hope you keep the UC on a local network. The Akinas Protocol leaves us no choice but to stay offline. You simply can't use Internet 3 without a machine at Area 51 knowing about it. I don't know whatever it was expecting to accomplish. I guess it backfired, whatever his plans were. JC, if you find my daughter, tell her I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to risk her life. I hope you find her. I've lost so many of my people this way. More than a dozen of our scientists were prisoners in the Ocean Lab, and have probably drowned. We can't give in to MJ-12, even if one of us has to die. I hope you find her. If we can do anything, let us know. If we can do anything, 
Let us. Tiffany is the last of Gary's family. I would be careful about trusting the. A spy for Paige assassinated Gary's wife shortly after we came here. Majestic 12 will be back. We're close to having a UC and they know it. Mr. Denton, whatever it takes, get her back. I would be careful about. A spy for Paige assassinated Gary's wife shortly after. You think we I'm came doing here. the right thing? Going after Savage's daughter? Absolutely. Never negotiate with a terrorist. Tiffany could lose her life. Never negotiate. You will only encourage more acts of terror. Besides, you're gonna bring Tiffany back alive. Yes, sir. I'll do what I can to get her back. Know much about the Echelon system? Bits and pieces. Why? Morgan Everett just had me connect two Echelon AIs together. They've merged to form an entity called Helios. Sounds like Everett was making a play for power, and it backfired. What does that do for Majestic 12? I'm not sure. Unatko was aware that the Daedalus system had become unreliable, but no one knew why. Icarus was the same system with a few modifications. Paige seemed to think he had won. Perhaps. The NSA's had the internet hardwired through Area 51 since the 30s. But if components of Daedalus are still active, I would bet his control is less than absolute. I hope you're right. Thanks. I know you can pull off the rescue. You better move out. Don't underestimate the ruthlessness of Bob Page. I'll stay here with Savage's people. That's where we have the advantage against Bob Page. We've learned his secrets, his first line of defense. All right, I've landed. You won't believe this, but I have Tong with me. He looks pretty sick. Savage has promised to get him some medical attention. Meet us at the base entrance to the northeast. Wow. Seems like that was quite a lot of plot all at once there. So, both Icarus and Daedalus are gone now. Replaced by a... composite entity known as Helios. I wonder if this guy has anything to say. We heard about Gary's daughter. Our hearts are with you. We were prepared for direct attack. Guess that's it. Well, I don't quite feel like talking with the lady on the roof again. That'd be a long walk just for one line of dialogue. Instead, it's time to come down here and have a chat with Tracer Tong, of all people. JC! Hello? What's wrong? An error. One of the experiments. I have the Great Death. He flew into San Jose and had no way to get here. I am not a high-order term in the equation anymore. Do not concern yourselves with me. You aren't dead yet, Tong. Savage will take care of you. I'm here for selfish reasons. To have access to the cure. Let's just hope we're able to manufacture it. Savage's daughter failed to get the parts he needs for the UC. She's being held prisoner by Majestic 12. We should get moving. Tony Maris is on the way to help Tong. By all means, go! You don't have time to stand around on account of me. Hop in, JC. Huh. Guess I didn't have time to stand around on account of Tracer Tong. I do sometimes wish that uh, Jock would, you know, go a little faster when he leaves an area in the helicopter, though. It's just a bit slow sometimes. So, today, I think I'll head back to Literature Corner. Our subject is a bit of a stretch, but there is a reference to it in Deus Ex, so it's still fair game. So, do you remember the Tan Hotel Register? I believe every single name is actually a reference. You can see Gabriel Syme there from The Man Who Was Thursday, along with Hippolyta Hall from Los Angeles. Hippolyta is a DC superhero known as Fury, and she's a member of Wonder Woman's cast, but these days, she is less remembered for her bit part in the DC multiverse, and more for her role in The Sandman, the flagship of DC's Vertigo imprint. Therefore, today I shall discuss Neil Gaiman. The Sandman In the mid-1980s, 
DC editor Karen Berger brought a number of British authors into DC Comics in an attempt to inject some creativity and a few mature themes into the company. One such author was Neil Gaiman, who at that point was known more for his journalism than for his fiction. Still, his previous work was suitably impressive to get him noticed, and after a short miniseries called Black Orchid, he was offered the chance to resurrect a 70s superhero named the Sandman, and to do so with complete creative control. Sandman was originally a fairly standard magic-based superhero created by Jack Kirby, but Gaiman's Sandman was different. Dream, also known as Morpheus, is one of seven Eternals, and his siblings are Destiny, Death, Destruction, Despair, Desire, and Delirium. In 1916, Roderick Burgess, a lawsuit-friendly version of Aleister Crowley, manages to trap Dream in a glass ball and keep him captive for 70 years. In the end, his son makes a mistake and Dream escapes. After giving his host the gift of an eternal waking nightmare, he goes to search for his lost artifacts of power, a pouch of sand he finds with the help of John Constantine, a helm which wound up in Lucifer's hands, and a ruby possessed by supervillain Dr. Destiny, whose real name is John Dee, the same as Queen Elizabeth's famous alchemist. Dream's next task is to take a census of his realm and discover who has slipped away in his absence. Two dreams, Brute and Glob, were acting as sidekicks to the previous DC Sandmen, Garrett Sanford and Hector Hall, in order to create a replacement dream whom they could control. Of course, no mere mortal can replace an Eternal, especially a ghost, like Hector Hall was when he became the Sandman. Incidentally, Hector and his pregnant wife Hippolyta were residing in a hidden dream when Morpheus came to retrieve his subjects and he caused Hector to pass on in the process. Hippolyta could not forgive Dream for that, nor for claiming her unborn son Daniel as a subject, since he spent two years in vitro in a dreamland. However, once the characters and main plot are established, and even before then, Sandman comics tend to cover mostly self-contained short stories, told in a number of different ways. The overarching theme is stories and dreams, and Morpheus himself is at best a minor character in many of them. Instead, it tends to follow other historical and mythological figures like Marco Polo, Robespierre, and Joshua Norton, Emperor of the United States of America. Let me give you an example. In the middle of a storyline called The Dollhouse is the short story Men of Good Fortune. Once upon a time, in 1389, a man named Hob Gadling is chatting with his friends in an English pub. He's had his share of death. He's seen the plague. He served in Burgundy during the Hundred Years' War. Death is rubbish, a mug's game. And he decides he'll have none of it. Who says that everyone has to die, after all? Well, it turns out that Death and Dream are also in the tavern, and overhear Hob, and on a whim, they decide to humor him. So long as he wishes, death will not take him, and in fact he will not age, and all he has to do in exchange is return to the pub every 100 years to meet with Dream. Sure enough, a hundred years pass and Hob is still alive and well. He participated in the War of the Roses, and once that cooled down he decided to invest in a printing press. A hundred years after that, Hob is doing great. He's made a fortune in shipping. He has a wife and child, and he even bought land and a title when King Henry VIII confiscated the Catholic Church's property. At the same time, Dream notices a young actor determined to be a playwright, and decides to strike a deal to inspire Mr. Shaxbird in exchange for a few plays about dreams. However, a hundred years after that, Hobbes' life has fallen to pieces. His wife died in childbirth, his son died in a bar fight, he was almost drowned for being a witch, and he fought on the wrong side in the English Civil War. Dream asks him then if he is ready for death, but then Hop calms down and responds, Are you crazy? Death is a mug's game. I got so much to live for. When they meet again in 1789, they get interrupted by Joanna Constantine, John's ancestor. 
However, Dream shows her and her cronies a nightmare, and they leave. Although not before Dream points out that Hob shouldn't have made his new fortune off the slave trade. By 1889, Hob has realized his mistake, but he's also realized something else. He is not the only immortal, nor even the only immortal human. And so, Dream's whim must have been for something other than curiosity. He wanted a companion, a friend who would not disappear after a few dozen years. Dream is offended by this and storms out, but Hob makes a promise. If Dream returns again in 1989, it will be because they are friends and for no other reason. Sure enough, when the new date rolls around, Dream shows up, saying, I have always heard it was impolite to keep one's friends waiting. The Sandman's central story wraps up when Hippolyta's son Daniel disappears. The boy was kidnapped by Loki and Robin Goodfellow, also known as Puck. But Leta thinks Morpheus killed him and seeks out the Furies so she can get her revenge. The Erinyes only go after Kinslayers, but they can indeed help, because Dream ended the life of his son Orpheus, who had survived as a disembodied head for centuries after he was torn apart by Thracian Maenads. But even once Leta realizes her mistake, the kindly ones cannot be stopped, and thus Dream of the Endless lets his sister Death take him away. Fortunately, he is immediately replaced by his chosen successor, whom he rescued from Loki's clutches, Daniel. Before I move on, I'd like to also recommend the Vertigo series Lucifer. It's a spin-off of Sandman, and it follows the devil himself after he realizes that ruling Hell is also part of God's plan. Since predestination is the thing he hates the most, he quits and opens a nightclub in Los Angeles. Lucifer is more focused on the main character, or at least the main plotline, and to me at least, Satan is a much more interesting character than Dream. Other works I pretty much have to mention American Gods first, but then who am I to argue? So, the way things work in the novel, along with how they work in Sandman and a lot of other fantasy religions, is that belief creates power. Gods come into existence once we imagine them, and then last until we forget them, growing and waning in power depending on how many people sincerely worship them. Moreover, in American Gods, each deity has a separate incarnation for every population, and so the United States has become a melting pot of divinities. Odin arrived with the Vikings. African Gods followed the slave trade, and of course the native gods have been around for thousands of years. Even tall tales can create immortals like Johnny Appleseed, and belief in modern technology has created the new gods of the internet, mass media, and other such totems. There are even men in black, because we believe there are men in black. The book's action follows an ex-con named Shadow, who gets dragged into the world of American gods when a con artist calling himself Wednesday hires him to act as a bodyguard. It soon becomes obvious that the con man is actually Odin, and that he's trying to rally the old gods of mythology against the new gods of technology. Things get complicated after that. Chernabog, wearing the guise of a Russian immigrant, offers to smash Shadow's skull in with a sledgehammer. At one point, Shadow has to hide out in a funeral parlor, run by three Egyptian gods and later he relocates to the small town of Lakeside, which makes unwitting child sacrifices to a kobold in order to keep their community alive. Shadow survives the events of the book despite dying at one point, mostly because it turns out that he's a god himself, one whose fate is to die and be reborn over and over again. Which god exactly? is revealed only in a short story published in the collection Fragile Things, and so I'd recommend reading that too, along with Anansi Boys, which follows other characters in the same setting. The next book I'd like to mention is The Graveyard Book, which is basically, and intentionally, a cross between The Jungle Book and H.P. Lovecraft's Dream Cycle. And that's something else I wholeheartedly recommend, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath is my favorite work by Lovecraft, 
and it's best experienced if you pass through the rest of the cycle first. Anyway, I've read the Graveyard Book too, and I recommend it, but I'm not that fond of the ending. It does the whole the magic fades as you grow up thing, and that's common enough, but I hate that sort of ending. I mean, yeah, you set aside your toys as you grow older, but you shouldn't have to leave everything behind like that. The games we play as children prepare us for adulthood. The relationships we form define us, and the hobbies we pick up teach us valuable skills and may even lead to a career. I am more than just a child, but my childhood is still the foundation of who I am today. So the magic may fade, but the skills the magic taught us, and most importantly, the memories it gave us, those should always remain. <sighs> Let's see, some other recommendations. Others Good Omens, a collaboration between Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. It's a comedic book about the apocalypse, starring an odd couple demon and angel pair, who would both rather enjoy themselves on Earth than see the planet explode. Uh, Coraline, watch the movie, thought it was pretty good. The story's a pretty classic fairy tale, but it's got a great presentation. Stardust, never watched nor read, but I've heard good things. Anything else? Uh, well, that should be enough, shouldn't it? 75 issues of Sandman, 75 issues of Lucifer, 6 novels, 2 short story collections, and 2 movies. Depending on how fast you read, that should account for your free time for the next month to a year. And trust me, it'll be worth your time. So thanks again for joining me in Literature Corner, and I hope I'll see you soon.